Greetings from RCCG New Covenant Parish in Oklahoma City. This is the Open Heavens for April 8th, 2019. And the title is Sorrow, an Arrow in Satan's Quiver. Sorrow, an Arrow in Satan's Quiver. And the memory verse is Proverbs chapter 15 verse 13 which says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken and the Bible reading is from Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8 to verse 12. And it reads, So they read distinctly from the book, in the law of God, and they gave the sense, and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest and the scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is only to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. Verse 10 says, Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And as we can see from the title, sorrow is an arrow in Satan's quiver. It's one of the weapons the enemy uses to attack people. So of course we know that sorrow is characterized by weeping, by mourning, by bitterness, by depression, by disappointment, and so many of, of such. And it is indeed an arrow in the quiver of Satan, and not just Satan, and his agents. They are looking for ways to make people sorrowful. That is their desire. And they are doing that so that they can break men's spirits and determination to move forward in life. So that's, what, that's the whole point of the devil bringing about sorrow to the lives of people. He wants it to use to break the spirit of men so that they will not move forward. That is why he, introduced, he does his best to make people sorrowful. And of course we know why did sorrow come or how what was the genesis of that? You know sorrow became part and parcel of the human experience because of our descent into sin and the pronouncement of God's judgment that subsequently followed. So that was not the original plan. But because of sin, and because of the pronouncements of judge, God, judgment as a result of that sin, sorrow became part of the human experience. And even in Ecclesiastes 2, looking at verse 22 to verse 23, there was, a, there was a part of it that talks about, For all his days are sorrows, and his travel grief, yea, his heart taketh no rest in the night, this is also vine. So you can still see all the days. Sorrow. 
But we know that that is not the portion of we his children. And we know even up until now, yes, that was the genesis of sorrow, but even up until today, the devil is still shooting the arrow of sorrow all over the world through various means. Sickness, poverty, childlessness, terrorism, natural disasters, calamities, you know, and so many are of such, untimely death. So there are so many ways the devil is still using to attack people by shooting arrows of sorrow. However, the good news is that Jesus became a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief so that we can enjoy the joy of the Lord right here on earth. That is very important. So Jesus Christ came down to earth. You could describe him as he became a man of sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. But he did all of that so that you and I can experience joy right here on earth. So that is why he came. And the prayer for us today, one of the prayers we have here which we'll say amen to, is that we decree by the power in the name of Jesus that sorrow will cease in your life from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, God provides comfort for the sorrowful and promises eternal deliverance from sorrow. So we know that even though the devil and his agents are throwing and shooting arrows of sorrow, we serve a God that provides comfort. And that is something that you and I should lean upon. Despite all the sorrows that the enemy is targeting and throwing, we serve a God who has promised deliverance from sorrow and to give us comfort. And we also know that he has sent his Holy Spirit to us. His Holy Spirit to continually comfort and to strengthen. That is why we cannot do without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's a comfort, it's a strength, even in a time of need. Though he's walking our lives, Satan, evil out of sorrow, is rendered powerless over us through the work of the Holy Spirit. So yes, the devil's evil are raised around, but they are rendered powerless through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That is why we need to walk in the Spirit at all times. And our dad is asking us a question here today. Have you suffered any form of loss or disappointment or pain? We have been encouraged to yield to the comfort of the Holy Spirit and pick yourself up from the hardships of discouragement and face life with renewed vigor. What has happened? What has caused you pain? What has caused you disappointment? What has caused you sorrow? Remember that the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. Don't give up. Pick yourself back up and face this life that God has given you with renewed vigor. Why? Because the devil's aim is to break you. He wants to break you and I and break our spirits by introducing sorrow. But we should not give in to him because we have the Holy Spirit that can comfort us and strengthen us even irrespective of what we have faced. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And no matter what sorrow you are going through, no matter what difficulties you are going through, our dad is also encouraging us because the devil tries to put this in the minds of people, even in this age, it's becoming rampant and rampant. And that's the area of contemplating suicide, where you want to take your life. Don't do that. No matter what you are faced, no matter what you are going through, no matter the turmoils, the trials, the travails, we plead with you, we plead with you that please do not contemplate suicide. That is the desire of the enemy over you. But pick yourself back up, rely on the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and it will give you the renewed vigor and strength to face life and face life afresh and anew. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name.
And the action point is that reach out to anyone you know who is discouraged or grieving today with words of hope and encouragement. Let's pray. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus. We know there are people out there that are facing different trials, different sorrowful situations. But Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will use us as instruments of bringing encouragement and hope to those that are facing discouragement and pain right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, every sorrow in our lives, Lord, shall be replaced with the joy of you, O God, that is our strength in Jesus' name. Thank you for the joy that will override every sorrow, every hour of sorrow that any must will throw away. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day and see you tomorrow by God's grace.